Hey everybody, welcome back. Devin, the OG, the original Grognard. No, we're not down at my table. We're at another table in the house right now because I've still got stuff on my gaming table and I wanted to get this video out. What are we looking at? <laughs> Gunslinger, Avalon Hill, 1980-something-something-something. This is my grail game this is the penultimate game in my collection that i have been wanting to get back into my collection for decades it's back home again <laughs> i cannot i there are no words there are no words i uh i picked this game up 19 oof, I wasn't even driving yet, 84, 85, bought it at a Toys R Us for 20 bucks. Yeah, Toys R Us used to sell Wargame. Well, we used to have these stores called Toys R Us. Most people don't know what they are anymore. Um, and they used to sell lots of war games. I bought this at Toys R Us for 20 bucks and <laughs> I remember driving home, I had opened up the box, I was looking through it and I'd mentioned, oh, beer bottles. And my mother, being the overly protective woman she was, kind of frowned at me. What do you mean there's beer in there? Is you're drinking? It's like, no, 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 Mom. You, you watch the Westerns just as much as I do. Beer bottles get broken over people's heads. They're for beer fight. It was just an amusing uh, I exchange. This game, why do I love this game? Is it because of the rules? Not really. It's not the best rule set out there. There are a lot better rule set. Maybe not for westerns or for for man to man gunslinging type. Um, it, it it's written in your typical early eighties Avalon Hill ubiquitous, overly complicated, pain in the ass. You need an engineering degree to to figure it out. So it's not the rule set. Does it play quick? No, not really. It can be a pretty long, drawn-out game. It's got several steps and lots of card draws. It's got card draws. There's no dice rolling in this game. For those of you who think the dice are always against you, like my dice are always against me, that's a fact. Uh, that this we, we had the University of uh, Wisconsin do a test, and yes, my dice are definitely against me. Um, this, is, this is uses card draws, so you don't have the randomness of dice to go against you um is it a popular game kinda um you can still find this being played at conventions every now and then to this day um so it's 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 a good rule set it's not a great rule set it's it's fun to play it's long and ambitious to underplay it's still being played but I wouldn't say it's a great game. However, it is one of my grail games. I, 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 I had a copy, like I said, I had a copy of Gunslinger. I lost it after I got out of the service. And I've been trying to get it back into my collection. And just for the uniqueness of it and the, and the rarity of it, this is one of the games that Avalon Hill didn't do like 30,000 copies in one of their print runs. They, I think they did like 20,000 copies. I mean, there are copies out there. An unbox or a unripped in the cellophane, unpunched, 180 bucks, 200 bucks. Shit, you can find Panzer Blitz and Panzer Leader games out there unpunched for like 10 bucks. So yeah, it's it's a little bit of a rarity. Um, I completely lost my train of thought because I'm so excited about having this game back in my collection again. Great cover. I showed the cover to a buddy of mine. He said he loved it so much he was going to get it printed out and put up in his office. This is a great cover. This really is a hot, hot cover. I don't know who the artist was. Avalon Hill tended not to, to, to put that on their, on their boxes. But great cover. What is Gunslinger? It is a man-to-man -man game of Western gunfights. <laughs> Kinda, kinda goes along with with the whole the whole title. Okay, so why do I like this game? Not the greatest rule set, not the easiest to play. Kinda can still find people all over to play. Why do I enjoy it? I grew up on a farm. 
at, at, at the end of the day, I'm a farm boy. Yeah, I ain't lived on a farm in 40 years, and I don't wear cowboy boots, and I don't listen to much country music anymore, but I grew up on a farm. My father was a cowboy. All of his brothers were cowboys. Grandpa was a cowboy. I grew up in Denver, Colorado, pretty much on the Great Plains. I grew up watching all the old westerns. My father loved westerns. My mother loved Elvis movies, so those were the two genres I grew up with, Elvis movies and westerns. I totally bought into the whole cowboy western mythos, the mythos of the cowboy. It is a uniquely American phenomenon. Just like the Mounted Knights are for uh, uh, Europe, the Samurai for Japan, you know, uh, the Maori Warriors for the South uh, Southwest Pacific. Is that Southwest? Southern Pacific. The Cowboys are uniquely American. America. I love America. And, you know, like I said, I, I'm a suburban boy, but I still consider myself a farm boy at heart. Um, and that's kind of why I, I fell in love with this game because, Hey, like I said, pretty much the only movies I watched when I was growing up and I was a kid were Westerns. And this allowed me to, to play out those, 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 those TV shows and those movies. And really there has not been a lot of really good Western games out there. I mean, right off the top of my head, there was TSR's Boot Hill, which wasn't a bad role-playing game, but it was a role-playing game. I remember when I first got into it, Westerns is hard to do as a role-playing game because you don't have clerics to heal you, you don't have healing potions, and a bullet will kill you quicker than dead, and quicker can kill you dead quicker than a sword can. So, <laughs> gunfighting games tend to be very brutal, so don't make the best role-playing game. And it's kind of funny because I remember when TSR first came out with Boot Hill, the first module they had was a haunted mine. It's like, really? You're throwing ghosts and shit at us in a Western? Come on. But, you know, whatever. I digress. Uh, let's see what else. Back in the day, there was the there was the flip. No, not really the flip book, but the point of view book. They the Dawn Ace of Aces or Dawn Patrol was the first one that came out where you where you had the biplane and you choose your maneuver against the opponent and you looked at the different uh, uh, pages to see what your pers perspective was and you'd fight each other. Um, they had one of those for for gunslingers. What other westerns? I there's been a few role playing games, but actual tabletop counter hex and counter, it just really wasn't anything. I mean, I can't think of it. I'm sure there was, but uh, you know, my mind draws a blank right now. If anybody out there may know some, uh, please uh, share in the uh, comments section. So. I got this game back in my collection. How did I get this game back in my collection? This was a kind, kind, kind donation from a good friend of the channel. And I've kind of debated back and forth if I should mention. I asked him and he said he didn't care. I just don't want people just because of the value of this game. And it was a donation that it just it dropped out of the blue on me. He, he, he contacted me. Uh, a couple weeks ago, and said, I need your address. I got something I want to send you. I was like, all right, cool, yeah. You know, I'll always accept donations. And I kind of thought, you know, might be the new lock and load system because he and I have been talking about that, and he and I played it a little bit together. Or and then, or it might have been, you know, Second World War at Sea, the Midway, because he had pointed out, hey, on over on the market, the Facebook Marketplace, there's a there's a copy of Second World War at Sea for sale. It's like, yeah, I know. I just, just don't have the finances for it. So I, I thought it might have been one of the, never in my, in my, wildest imagination would I have thought that um, it would be Gunslinger. I mean, I can die happy now. I Literally. I am not kidding when this is the penultimate title of my, of my collection. There are a lot of other games I want to pick up that I still want to pick up that I still want to try to reacquire for my, that, I got, that, that I got rid of and I lost after I got out of the service. But this was number one. Um, yeah, I, I, I can die tomorrow and be a happy, complete, contented individual. So, anyways, um, but so I've been debating if I should, but I, I got to give props to him, uh, Todd, the itinerant hobbyist. Just, dude, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Uh, I don't know how much that you realize that this game means to me. For all its flaws and for all its negatives, uh, it is it is the grailest of grail games for me. I now that I have this in my collection, it's like, all right, now what? 
<laughs> yeah, there's a few other games I'd like to get, but you know, there's nothing that that is the oh glowing halo white light around it game. Uh, this is uh, yeah. Anyways, I should stop pontificating and and uh, and uh, bloviating on that. I even still have my original copy of the general magazine that went along with it. I don't have the counters. It was really cool because this issue came with uh, a bunch of counters, uh, more weapons, and it added in some uh, some wildlife like uh, uh, lions and bears, not bears, buffalo and bulls and rattlesnakes and added in some new uh some new uh guns and such but i still have this original and you know this has got some uh some extra some new tournaments tournament sh scenarios which are you know supposed to be equal if they can play these at cons and, and stuff like that um eight so eight and two three four five six no let's see how many one two three four five six, seven so yeah seven seven people on a side and it's all, you know, man versus man, all uh, uh, against each other. No, no teams or anything like that. However, okay, so I don't have the counters anymore. But I do have a Facebook, or not Facebook, a uh, web page that's got all the old General Magazines. In fact, all the old Avalon Hill magazines. All the General Magazines, all their All-Star Replay. I think that was their sports magazines. Uh, even Victory Games. I think it's, I think it's got the Victory Games... What the hell was theirs? This is more of a role playing magazine. Uh, anyways, uh, and so I went on as soon as I as soon as I got this home and opened it up. It's like, oh, I gotta find the counters. So I went on there. It's like, yes, they got the counters. So I downloaded the PDF of the counters so I can print those out and get those back into the game. Uh, so, geez, twelve minutes and I'm I'm still gushing over this. Um, and I'm sure both of my roommates are giggling and laughing at me. So what are we doing here? What are we do we were doing taking a look at yes, we're going to play this. Not anytime soon, because I've still got Second World War at Sea set up on the table, and I've got at least, you know, I got maybe two or three more videos on that. Hoping the carriers will, will, will get to get to each other in the next major video I do and we get some get some good action with that, but we're not talking about that right now. So we're gonna take a look at what's inside here. And <laughs> why <laughs> This, 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 I don't, I didn't ask Todd how much he paid for this, and I'm not going to. It was a gift. It was a donation. I think it's disrespectful to ask uh, for the price value, so I'm not going to. Although, looking what's in it, you can kind of guess it was a bit of a pretty penny. So, let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at it. All right. So, here we go. Oh, it's got the counters in it. Oh, my God, I didn't even notice this. See, I didn't, I, I just barely kind of cracked this open just to make sure the contents were all here. I didn't even notice. Here is the counter sheet from it. Oh, I don't have to print it out. Oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. Cool. So, yeah, you got, you got buffalo, and you've got cows, and you got a couple cougars. No, not the ones that hang out in the bars looking for underage or younger men. Uh, actual mountain lions. Yeah, I should probably say that instead of cougars. Um, and then you got bows and some more rifles, whips, some derringers. There's a pepper, pepper box and a volcano and just some, some other pistols and some rattlesnakes. And then the back. Oh, that's cool. That is so cool. That you, this, this is, this is what came in this issue of the gen. Oh, I didn't even notice that when I cracked that. Ah, that is so cool. Uh, and then here's the, here's the stats. Let's see what some of the weapons that they gave. Sharp bow, Kentucky rifle, musket, Plains Hawken, Patterson carbine, Mississippi rifle, sharps. Ah, oh, love the sharps. Don't like the carbines. Revolving carbine. Rifled musket. Henry's, yes. Spencer. Winchester 66. Trapdoor conversion. Yeah, sharps big 50. Boom, motherfucker. Winchester. Doesn't have the golden boy on there. Doesn't have the well, Hen eh, Golden Boy was Henry was a Golden Boy, so. But anyways, I think that's a coll collection of all the yeah. This is all the pistols: Philadelphia Derringer, Baby Patterson, Patterson Dragoon, Pepper Box, Dainty Pepper Box, Texas Patterson, the Dragoon, the Navy, the Lamat, the Star Pepper Box, Double Derringer, American Cloverleaf, the Russian Peacemakers, and forty four and forty five, the Thunder, the Lightning Frontier, Schofield. Yeah, a lot of good good. Good, good stuff. Ah, so that's very cool. 
Didn't even know that that was in the box. I'm getting more surprises every day. All right, so here we have, here. here's what a typical uh, character sheet looks like. And this is probably one of the reasons why not a lot of people really got into this, because it was almost role-playing aspect to it, because you just didn't have counters set down. You had to have this legend sheet for what game turn it was, your symbol, you know, where your weapons were, where your card play was, your endurance, and your ammo selection. Probably could have been... I've gone to Board Game Geek, and there are better ways of doing this. But again, it's really cool. He's laminated a couple of them. Really great idea. Uh, because you have... Let's go ahead and pull this out. You had... Oh, there we have a general... God, I remember having dozens of these. Um, you got a pad of character sheets. And it's not like, when, of course, when I picked it up, they, home printers, what was that? Go to a print shop to get stuff printed? Yeah, that's not happening. You wanted a new one of these? You ran out of these? Yeah, I had to order them straight from, uh, from, uh, from Avalon Hill. So the simple fact that he took a bunch of these and laminated them is a brilliant idea. The truth of the matter is, how many have I got? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, so seven. They're, they're gonna be done. That all the tournament games can be done with the seven here. And eh, I might do one or two more. Uh, like I said, over Board Game Geek, great resource for finding uh, aftermarket stuff. Um, I may go ahead and print out, if, or, or may not print out. Well, I may print out and laminate a bunch more copies for myself, just so <laughs> I don't blow through. See, because when I originally first got the game, it's like, okay, well, I'll give every character their own character sheet and wrote it out in pen. I was 14, 15. Don't friggin' judge me, all right? I was an idiot. Um, and then by the time I got down, it's like, oh, I don't have enough character sheets for everybody. Crap. Oh well, the follies of youth. Alright, so yeah, so here's 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 the legend sheet. And it is a card play system, and we'll get into that in a little bit. So the guy laminated these great idea. Uh, of course I couldn't have done that back in the day. The the concept, the idea of laminating anything back in the mid eighties, well early eighties to me was just foreign. Foreign. Uh, and then you have counters. And so you have people counters. And they're circular, and you've got a little arrow directing which which direction they're pointing towards. And you got horses, and you got a whole bunch of different uh, and the little head H for head. So if you stick your head around the corner, you put the little H marker out there. But you got all these different colors, and the different colors were different factions. Uh, dark blue, if I remember, was uh, U.S. military, and light blue were just general gunslingers. Orange were. T uh, Orange, this type of orange, I think, was town folk. Uh, then you had the Native Americans, which were kind of this, or yeah, Native Americans and uh, and banditos were the kind of this light red color. So you had a different color, yeah, had different factions, and they had different colors to color code. So that made it kind of easy. Uh, and then of course, you know, you had your pistol, your weapons. Henry is a 44, Winchester 44, and now those are rifles, and what do we got here? Yeah, money boxes, gun belts, uh, bags of money if you're doing a bank robbery, bandolores for equipment for your guys, and what do we got here? Ladders, roof, bales of hay, tables, chairs so you can set up bar fights, knives, rocks, dynamite i remember always trying to throw dynamite at people yep beer bottle right there there's the infamous beer bottle that i got yelled at from my mom for that it was in the game kniffies pails just good stuff what else we got uh markers for delays uh whenever you get injured or if you get uh uh scared or shaken up you're you have delay counters and reflex counters uh and then endurance how much wounds you've taken oh no those are the aim markers so you could spend more time aiming to increase your chances of hitting the target. Now, the reason why... Okay, what else? we got some more counters here. Some Okay, so pistols, Colt 41, Smith & Wesson, Colt 45, Derringers. And I can't remember what the tack... 
can't remember what the tack counters are for. Anyways, so the reason why I think he ended up, my buddy Todd ended up spending a pretty penny for this is take a look at this. Cards are unpunched. <laughs> oh, God. This is like finding a unicorn. There is a part of me, the, the collector in me is going, oh, I don't know if I want to punch these. Maybe I should scan them and print them out and go to Board Game Geek because I know they've got really cool card redesigns and maybe I should do that instead. And the game player in me is going, fuck it, just punch it, punch them, you bastard. The games are meant to be played. Uh, and I play games. I don't collect games, I play games. So... All these great cards unpunched. So I remember when I said it was a it was a card driven system. They got all these result cards. So you take a look. Basically, it comes down to how many aim points you put into something, what your range is, and then what your effects is, and then delay wound. I mean, that's that's basically all there is to it. How many aim points did you have sitting at the target? Draw a card. What your range is? Boom! There you go. What the effect is, and then the effect is modified by your weapon because you know the bigger weapons do bigger damage. That's all. The, that's what. That's the result. That's 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 how you. That is the short and sweet version of what <laughs> combat is in this game. Now it's also card driven for your actions, what you do in the game. Now I didn't realized this when I was a wee lad first starting playing the game, because like I said, the rules were written too ubiquitously for me. Um, there are, I think there are seven or eight suites or suits. Suits, not suites. <laughs> suits, and those are the base cards that every character can have. So, you know, everybody who's going to have is going to have an advance card. They're going to have a shoot card, you know, so you see right here, advance, shoot, run, low. I mean, every character that you look... See if I can find some other counters that aren't. Yeah, like right here. Here's some squares. So circles. So diamonds, stars. So like I said, I think there's there are seven, seven or eight different uh, suits of cards. And every character has those basic cards. Depending on what your character is, you might get a few additional special cards that don't have any, any markings on them like these. For a draw and cock. You know, some people are really good at drawing and cocking, so gunslingers would get those. And what else is there? Cock and shoot. Let's see if we can find some. You know, kick, bear hug, strength, hook, kick. For, you know, if you're good at fighting, you might have, you know, hand-to-hand, -hand, you might have a hook card or a strength card or bear kick. And I think, uh, uh, what are some others? No, anyways, so those are the two different types of action cards. And if you notice on the action card, it tells what the what it is, cock, aim, shoot, obviously. Name, option, target, yeah. So proper hands box, option, choose one. Cock or uncock gun, place two aim points. Shoot, aim time is one-handed gun, two-handed gun, yada, yada, yada. Fan fire, you could also use it as a get up, get down card. But you also have this little number here. That's, that's an action point. I'll, I'll get into that in a little bit, which is basically one of the reasons why, well... It was a unique system for the time. It's rather commonplace nowadays, but, you know, for the time, it was very, very trend-setting. So, yeah, that's basically an act. And you've got, I think there are, I think you end up having eight to ten cards that you can play from to to choose what you're going to do for your turn. But basically, you have action points. You can spend five action points per turn, and as long as your five action points don't go over the, you know, you, you can put down five action points worth of cards for your turn, and then you just go into initiative order each turn. All right, who's got something for impulse one? Nobody, okay, impulse two. Oh, I got an impulse. I got a cock aim shoot to do it. Or, you know, okay, impulse three. Oh, I've got a swing card on impulse three. So and then you then you do it that way. So it, it's a cool way of figuring out initiative, who acts when, who acts where, all that good stuff. Your typical Avalon Hills rule book written in real friggin' tiny font again. Because Avalon Hill didn't seem to realize that the older we'd get, the worse our eyesight would be. But it's 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 a beefy rule book. Uh, I mean, 34 pages, small font. Let's just take a real quick look. The regular basic rules are... Let's see. 
Not very many pages, I remember that. What, maybe 10 pages? No, terrain and siding, walls, doors, windows. Hunting, yeah, pretty much 11 pages of rules. Yeah, you can now play any showdown or variant, 11 pages. So not that bad. And then they've got hunting rules. Uh, so if, for, you know, if you, if for hidden movement, basically, uh, campaign rules kind of has a role playing system. So you can kind of, uh, kind of do a role play game with it. Although I think it's far too complicated for a role play. Um, you can choose different careers and that'll determine your different skills. Like if you were a lawman, uh, you get SK one rifle one fighting plus two. And then if you get wounded, you know, that's what your, your stats will go down by, uh, different fear tables, wages, how much you'd make a month, and then you can buy equipment and change that equipment. I mean, honestly, it's, 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 yeah, it's kind of a role-playing system. I never played with it. And then a bunch of optional rules for horses and dynamite and stuff like that. And then you got designer notes on page 21 to 22, 23. And then a counter character list of all the counters or all the characters, uh, and then basically the showdowns, which are the scenarios. You know, bunch of scenarios. Twenty-one, yeah, twenty-six scenarios, and then variants for those different scenarios. So a lot of good stuff in here, and then striking table, impact table. You know, depending on which weapon you're using. So uh, say you, you get a vital card draw, and if you're using a Winchester 44, vital draw will be a kill. So it's basically look at the card, see what type of effect it is, cross-reference it with your type of weapon, and that'll be what the effect is. Say you get a crit with a Colt 41, it'll be a stun 6, serious 3. So what is a stun 6, serious 3? You go through the rules and then look at that. Basically, a stun is what delays your action points. So, the most complicated thing about this game was understanding the action points. Um, I mean, today, nowadays, you just say action point, and people understand what you're talking about. Back then, you really didn't understand the concept of action points because it really wasn't something we had seen before. So, and there's like two and a half pages on how action points work. Again, written overly complicated and more in depth than they needed to be. Uh, and then, of course, you know, summary of combat, your player aids cards. Mm -hmm. Again, what we saw in the back of the book striking table, impact table, so what your weapons effects are. Uh, then, more player aids. Uh, now, yeah, what do I want to go into? more just different characters town folks automatic actions but since you're doing gunfighting in an old west town sometimes there are second floors and so you know instead of having a separate board they just gave you a, a player aid card um for you know the second floor of some place and these all match up uh, buildings that are on the main game boards so you know three or four four pages of uh player aids now the game boards i always thought these game boards were absolutely the coolest i mean it is i mean the graphics are are pretty good i mean they're hexagonal this is a corral so it looks like a corral you've got the gates but the coolest thing i always thought found about these boards and i had never seen it before they were double-sided. I had never, ever in my life seen double-sided mounted. Again, look at these. These are mounted. Avalon Hill did mounted cardboard maps. So there are eight boards, but you actually have 16 maps, and they're all geomorphic, so you can put them any way you want for a virtually unlimited uh, setup. Oh, just absolutely got to love that. That was just the coolest thing. And all of them are this way. You see, you got a little gully right here. But on the back side, ah, look at that. Here's some stables, blacksmithing forge, ah, building on the other side. So all the map boards, a couple out, little 
outline houses saloon i mean it's just really really cool all the boards so you could do outdoors you can indoor do indoors and like i said they're kind of they're geomorphic so you can mash them up however you want i mean just absolutely beautiful absolutely absolutely beautiful love that about this game uh, actually hitting the limit on the timer, or actually hitting my hard drive limit. So I'll be right back after I download this. All right, so that's that's Gunslinger in a box. And, oh, yes, yes, the game also comes, as our friend Dan over at No Enemies here would say, a box and a lid. So, <laughs> that is Gunslinger, a uh, uh, first look. Uh, my little my history with it, why I enjoy this game so much, why I like this game. Yes, we are going to be playing. This is not a solitaire, really a solitaire friendly game. It really isn't um, because you're 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 choosing each character has to choose out their their actions from their from their deck of cards and from their hand. And uh, you know, sometimes it's about trying to psych out your opponent when you're playing a game like that. So not really that solitaire friendly, but hey, did that ever stop me before? No, of course not. So we're going to be playing it anyways. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, I've got a lot of other projects on the table. It may take me a bit to get to this, but we are going to be getting to it soon my my trademarked soon ish i really should trademark that i use it so often um so yeah so, so can i kind of fit that in there can i fit that in there nope it's not gonna fit in there all right so let's go ahead put everything back in the box yeah <laughs> the little break i just had everybody goes you're gonna be playing that it's like well not right now it's like, all right i was just checking you're just bouncing around like a five-year-old six-year-old maybe not a five-year-old anyways the other thing i wanted to take a look at what was going on to the table next and may go on to the table next anyways is fire and movement what is this issue 31 31 19 what 1980 yeah <laughs> december 1982 three dollars game in a magazine why do we, where are we taking a look at this? Kamikaze, complete game in this issue. Again, another game that I lost after I got out of the service. Uh, don't ask me how much I paid. <laughs> I actually got this on Amazon. So it wasn't as bad as it could have been. But it was much more than the original $3 that I paid for the game back in, you know, 84, 85. Um, Kamikaze, really cool game. Really, really small, short little game. Four pages of rules. I mean, that's it. Those are the rules right there. Covering kamikaze actions. World War II, late in the war. Have a whole bunch of ships. You got different types of ships. You got cruisers. You got carriers. You got destroyers. Anti-aircraft cruisers. Whole bunch of cool different stuff. And yes, obviously, I, I've already laminated these. Bunch of counters. You know, the Japanese aircraft coming into kamikaze strikes. U.S. aircraft defenders. You know, more counters. 240 counters? 200, something like that. Um, yeah, this is going to get played as well. This was what was going to be my big announcement for the next my next reveal uh but then again that came in and so well that kind of that kind of that, that kind of overshadowed my uh <laughs> my big announcement for kamikaze i may get kamikaze to the table before uh gunslinger just because it is kind of a quicker easier game that i could probably knock out in one or two videos uh really fun little game uh but i just wanted to show that as well um what else have we got coming up what else have we got coming up uh uh, uh, I still need to finish off Second World War at Sea, Coral Sea Operations. Actually having a lot of fun with it. I mean, it's, it's not solitaire friendly. I've had to 
had to quote unquote set up the Japanese AI beforehand and then kind of respond to things and change things in the middle. But I, regardless of that, I'm still having fun with it. Is it a great tactical? Is it a great tactical naval system? No. Is it a great strategic naval system? No. Both both sides of the coin are very very simplistic. However, the simple fact that both of them are merged together, where you have the strategic and then fight it out at the tactical scale, you don't see that very often, and that's just really damn cool. I wonder. I wonder. Can I flip this around? No, I guess not. I know when I'm live streaming, I can flip the camera around and see my screen, but I guess I can't do that. Let's see, what are buttons, buttons, buttons? Let's see. No, that's auto. Oh, autofocus. Let's push the autofocus button, see what that does. Maybe that'll help me from here on out. Um. So, yeah, finish off Second World War C, Coral Sea actions, then. Probably Kamikaze and then Gunslinger. Um, no idea what I'll do after that. I'm sure I mean, something will crop up. Something always crops up. Uh, I've been looking, taking a look at some of my old micro games, uh, the old metagame concepts. It's like, ah, I got Ice War. We can bring out Ice War. I haven't played Ice War in decades. I've got that printed out already. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll have something, something coming. Uh... Yeah, I guess that's all I got. I need to get, get back to doing some, some stuff on the computer. Um, I just picked up Railway Empires uh, on Steam. I don't even remember. Oh, Calypso. Yeah, same guys that did... Is it Calypso? Yeah, Calypso. Same guys that did uh, Tropical and Era Presidente. Uh, having a lot of fun with that. It was ended up being a lot deeper uh, than I initially thought. And it's just so annoying that... Let's see. Well, let's see. Let's... Let's go ahead and turn it around anyways. Well, let's hope, hope hopefully, I <laughs> can't see if I'm focused at me, but eh, well, let's go ahead and top that. Uh, yeah, that, that looks about right. Who knows? Maybe you're looking at my nose. Um, I like sim games, management games. I love, I love trains. I love railroad games. Uh, the board game, computer game, you know, Sid Meier's Railroad Tycoon. I love that. I've still got that on Steam. I've got that on Steam. Unfortunately, it doesn't run on Windows 10 anymore. Uh it's really kind of irritated me, but uh, Railway Empires is really good, a lot deeper than I thought it was going to be. It's, it's, it's easier than Sid Meier, in some respects it's easier than Sid Meier's uh, Railroad Tycoon because you're not having to set each train exactly what you want each car to do. And that's the one thing that I always hated about uh, Railroad Tycoons is that it's like, all right, I'm making this a passenger line, so let's put five passenger cars on it and two mail cars. Oh, well, it didn't get all loaded up, but I've only got one passenger car and one mail car, but I'm still dragging the entire seven cars along with me. This one, you set up the routes, and it just grabs, all right, we're going from Toledo to to Omaha. Uh, okay, we got this in Toledo. They need this in Omaha. It was just autom load, automatically loaded up. So that's cool because I just have to set the lines, and then the AI will take care of putting what is needed at the other end or what I can make money off of into the car and then just set it to go. It's a little bit tougher setting up the roads because <laughs> in Sid Meier's game, you just set up the routes and it was either one track or two tracks. And it wasn't quite as realistic because trains could pass each other on the same same rail line in that one. Um which, you know, really they can't do in real life, but it's assumed that the scale that you're looking out there are side tracks and that they can, but, you know, so if you had two trains running on the same track, one would stop, the other would pass, and then as soon as it would pass, the other one would continue on. This one, it, no, it's, <laughs> you, you, no, you, your train goes one way, and if there's another train on the track, it's not going, so you got to set, you have to manually set up the side tracks, and you have to set up the signals. That kind of takes a little bit to, to get into. Um, it didn't take too much for me to figure it out. It's maximizing, so like the scenario I was doing last night, Chicago, with four tracks going into Chicago, and coming in and going out from both ways, how to maximize my trains going into the right platforms and setting up the crosses and the switches and, and that, that, you know, when you've got 20 trains trying to jam it into one railroad station, uh, you kind of got to have your track set up. And that, I enjoy that. Plus, you know, it's all, you know, 1830s, 1850s, you know, up to, I think, 19... 
20 is the latest you can go. So it's it's got a lot of cool sam scenarios campaigns. I might record some of that. I don't know. Um, trying to look around. What else I can? I'm trying to think what else I can do on the computer. I've been thinking of doing. <laughs> this would be completely off off the wall. Of course, I do that a lot. This is off the wall for me. Um, Star Wars: The Old Republic, the online role playing game. Uh, takes place about 3,500 years before Star Wars. So, you know, you don't have to worry about running into Luke Skywalker or any of that. And it's far enough back in time that they can pretty much do what they want to and not worry about having it affect, you know, what Star Wars canon is. Although, what Disney has done with the canon has irritated me to no end, but we won't bother getting into that. Uh, if you want to know what my thoughts are, my thoughts pretty much mimic my buddy's dog. Uh, used to be Dog Sidious, he's now the dog show. Look him up on YouTube. He'll he'll give you he'll give you his peace of mind on what what's been happening with the Star Wars uh, universe since the original. But I've been thinking of just taking a character from level one and just running through the storyline. I mean, it's a great story. I, 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 a lot of times I play video games for for the storyline. If they're not a strategy game, um, I enjoy the stories. It could be a horribly bad game, but as long as the story's good, I'll keep playing it. Star Wars has got some good gameplay, and it's got a really good story. So I'm thinking of sitting down maybe one or two hours a day, you know, starting with like a level one bounty hunter and just playing it all the way through. We'll see. I don't know. I don't know how much interest that'll get. Maybe streaming that. Maybe that'll, that'll spark some interest. But I need to start doing some more stuff on the computer. What else have I got? Al and I, my buddy Al, Al Red Sox fan, we're supposed to be sitting down and doing a, I'm supposed to be sitting down with him and doing a dissertation on the Battle of Coral Sea. And he's kind of got interested in it. We did uh, Operation Market Garden a month and a half, two months ago. Not on my channel. We did it on his channel. But if you're on my Facebook group, the original Grognard, uh, I linked it in there. Again, if, if you're on Facebook, if Facebook's your groove thing, go check out the original Grognard because uh, there there's a lot of stuff that I do that doesn't get recorded on the YouTube channel. My chats with Al on Saturday nights. Uh, I got an interview with, uh, with Ron from Retro Sports Network that I'm supposed to be participating in coming up. Uh, I, again, every Saturday night, chats with Al. I sometimes announce those on 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 uh, Facebook, but, you know, since it's not on my channel, most people don't see it. Or, of course, we talk about pop culture type stuff and sports and a little bit of military strategy, so I don't know how many of my fan base would really be that into it. It's kind of odd because I've got, like, three different types of fan bases. i got my fan base that, it, that comes from Al and my, uh, my, 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 my pop rap, pop culture. Yeah, me, pop culture, I know, right? Whatever. Um, and then i got my sports fans, which, you know, a small, dedicated group. And then i got my majority, which are Wargaming fans. And honestly, the three groups usually don't intermix. I have no problem slipping from one to another, but I guess I'm just a renaissance man that way. Um, so, yeah, join, join my Facebook group because there is stuff that gets on the Facebook that doesn't get... Uh, recorded <sighs> what else I think that's about it oh did I even say what Al and I were supposed to be doing no <laughs> Al and I did a discussion well, I did a discussion and Al asked questions uh, Operation Market Garden a month and a half two months ago and he wants to do one for Coral Sea next as well so one of these evenings when I'm feeling up to it and he's feeling up to it because we're both getting to be old men I turned 50 this month I don't feel 50 I mean, mentally, I think I'm still, like, 18 sometimes. Uh, well, physically, yeah, my body is feeling decrepit, but mentally, I don't feel... How, how's a 50-year-old supposed to act and feel? I don't know. I don't know how old I... I don't know how I'm supposed to act my age. I've never been this old before. And an hour from now, I don't know how to act how, that old because I've never been that age before. You see the problem? Adulting sucks sometimes. But, yeah, I turned 50 this month. I have no idea what I'm going to do. I know alcohol, blah blah blah. Yeah, we got with that. That's that's that that may happen regardless. I don't know. Steak, whiskey, cigar, hookers, cocaine. You know something. I don't know. Vegas trip maybe. Like dodge something from the wife throwing something at me. Uh, <laughs> I think that's about it. I think that's all I got for right now. So yeah. Join me on the Facebook on my Facebook, the original Grognard. And if if you don't have a lot of things on your Facebook that indicate that you're a gamer, like if we don't have any shared friends or share, send me a message so I know that yeah, I, I'm a gamer too. I'm interested. I'm not just I'm not a Russian bot trying to trying to get in to sell 
uh, Verace sunglasses at, 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 at cut rate prices or you're not ISIS trying to infiltrate me. Not today, ISIS. I've had that a couple times. <sighs> Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms in the comment section. I'll talk to everybody next time. See ya. Of course, I got to turn this around to, to turn it off. And I have a feeling that my it was looking right at my head or way over my head. Well, we'll see what happens. Bye.